Tonight's slate for Daily Fantasy Baseball is definitely a tricky one, and it's tricky mostly because there aren't a lot of what I would deem to be like perfect plays for today, and there's never a perfect play for DFS because every play can fail, but everyone has pretty big imperfections, especially a pitcher. It's hard to find guys with upside and floor whose games we know will play because there is some rain here on the slate as well. So it's a dicey slate for sure, and one where I am not entirely sure how things will break that could be a good thing because uncertainty breeds chaos we can benefit from chaos and plan for it for sure but it is a tough one for sure we're gonna break things down try to position ourselves to take advantage of potential chaos and win some money for tonight welcome on into the solo shop that's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com my name is jim sonis i am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down wednesday's seven game of the main slate with lock for 6.40 p.m. Eastern for tonight. Again, 6.40 p.m. Eastern is lock for today, so do not push that off. Uh, 6.40 p.m. Eastern is lock for Wednesday's slate. Speaking of the rain, there's a chance of rain in Cincinnati for the Reds and the Cubs. It is light rain, so they might be okay, but it is worth monitoring and checking back on later. Atlanta, I would say, is the biggest trouble spot. It's a good chance of rain. Doesn't seem light, so I'd keep an eye on that if you want to use... Braves or Phillies. Chicago is right up there with Atlanta in terms of its diciness. Uh, That's for the White Sox and Red Sox. Not sure if it's like worse than Atlanta, but it's pretty up there. I think both those those games, if you told me both got postponed, I wouldn't be shocked at all. So I'm going to talk about some White Sox, uh, talk about, you know, how to handle them and stuff like that, because I think they're in a good spot for today. Uh, But keep in mind that game is not guaranteed to play. So if you want to play tonight, make sure you're around 6.30 6.30 or so to swing back and check out weather and see how things have changed throughout the day. We're going to break down the pitching preview here in just one second, but first a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Our PGA podcast for the Charles Schwab Challenge is now up with myself and Brandon Gadula breaking down what is a pretty good field, a unique course as well, and letting you know where we are turning for DFS for this week. Just search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you listen to your podcast. We got that. I uh, don't believe there's any USC for this week, but we got NASCAR coming up as well uh, in Charlotte. So a lot of good stuff on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review. Hey, soccer fans, this season, FanDuel and Captain Morgan are teaming up to give you a one-of-a-kind soccer contest to spice up game day. Introducing Captain Morgan Soccer Pick'em, a weekly fantasy contest that is entirely free to play. The contest is simple. All you have to do is answer 10 questions about Captain Morgan in that week's soccer matchup. People with the most correct answers will earn their share of cash prizes. Head over to FanDuel.com slash free games slash Captain Morgan and spice up game day with a free shot at cash prizes every Saturday. No purchase necessary. Must be 21 plus to enter. Location restrictions apply. Void or prohibited. See full terms at FanDuel.com. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate. Lucas Giolito is the only guy above 9000 on FanDuel for today. He checks in at $10,300. Charlie Morton is $8,800. Drew Rasmussen is 86 Ranger Suarez, 83 Christian Javier is 82 And then Kyle Hendricks is $8,000. And listen to those names. You probably can tell just based on that why this slate is dicey. Because Giolito is the one guy up there. And he's not perfect. And he's also in a low strikeout matchup. Dylan Cease got destroyed by the Red Sox last night. Even with that mentioned, I do still think that Giolito is the clear top option here. As mentioned, facing the Red Sox, a 104 WRC plus against righties with a 20% strikeout rate, which means it is not an ideal matchup. We do have to downgrade Giolito when he's facing this team, specifically due to the strikeouts. But Giolito is just a lot better than the rest of the pitchers on this slate. He has a 35% strikeout rate this year. That is three percentage points higher than each guy's most relevant sample. And there's only one of the guy within shouting distance of him. We'll talk about in a second. He's got 2.67 skill interactive ERA. That's about a half, half run better than everyone else. So the talent's there. And Giolito has pitched well this year, even if there are some red flags. The problem is that his primary red flag is something that killed Cease last night, which is letting up uh, a lot of hard contact. The batted ball profile is not pristine. Gilito thus far, a 40% hard hit rate allowed with a 40% fly ball rate, which puts his expected ERA up at 3.69. He's definitely benefited from some soft matchups. That's a downside. It is reassuring, though, that 
we've seen Giolito do well, even when he's faced low strikeout teams. He had very good outings against the Guardians and the Royals this past two starts. Both those teams are low strikeout teams, so he can't overcome this. He's at home. He has not faced the Red Sox yet this year, so Cease had some familiarity issues. Giolito does not have those. I think that Giolito is the top guy on the slate. I'm going to treat him as such, but just keep in mind that even this profile isn't perfect, so I'll put him first, but my certainty in that is relatively low. I'm going to put Christian Javier second. Similar to Giolito, he is flawed. He's also flawed in the exact same areas where he's struggling with batted balls and his matchup is not great. But again, just not a lot of other options to get strikeouts on this slate. Javier's facing the Guardians. They have a 19% strikeout rate against righties this year based on their current active roster. And they cooled off a bit, but the overall number is still pretty good for the Guardians. And Javier is letting up a lot of dangerous contact. So I would not go here on a bigger slate. He does get strikeouts, though. We've seen Javier lowering his slider usage as he's gotten more stretched out. You know, when he was working shorter stints, he would lean on that slider a lot. Not as much recently, and typically that's a negative. But Javier is still getting whiffs, with, even with a, a reduced usage on that slider. He's got a 32% strikeout rate in four outings with fewer sliders. His skill interactive ERA is 3.11. Nine strikeouts his last time out with a 17.6% swinging strike rate. The batted balls have not hurt him yet. I don't expect that to continue. I think that uh, batted ball numbers stabilize pretty quickly. So eventually it'll be bad. I'm just going to have to hope that it doesn't happen tonight. I'm going to put Javier second behind Giolito. But if you get the sense that he'll be popular, feel free to pivot. There's not enough safety in Javier. Honestly, like you could make the same case for Giolito if you wanted. Um, there's not enough safety here to justify using them at, at high roster rates. So he's not infatable. Uh, I do have number two, but if you get the vibe that he will be very, very popular, which is possible given Slim Slate at home, pretty big favorite, you have leeway there to, to deviate because it could get dicey for sure. In the third spot, I do think that Luis Castillo and Ranger Suarez are in play, but I don't know if either game will go. And I already talked about G. Lito. That game may not play either due to the, the rain in Chicago. So let's talk about Drew Rasmussen here. He could be third regardless. But he's facing the Marlins at, at home. And it's not a bad offense. I've liked the Marlins quite a bit this year, but Rasmussen is a good pitcher. He's got a, a 3.36 skill interactive ERA in eight starts, the 22% strikeout rate. That's not elite, but for this slate specifically, it's pretty good. It's actually the third highest strikeout rate among guys who will go more than 70 pitches. Got a low walk rate, got a low fly ball rate. So Rasmussen is a good pitcher. The issue is you probably know his pitch count because Rasmussen has not gone more than 88 pitches yet this year. Across his past five starts, so if you scrub out the first three where he was ramping up, he still averages 84 pitches. So He's gotten the quality start bonus just once so far this year, and that matters. On a bigger slate, Rasmussen's not in my consideration set because I need length, and he doesn't have it. But we're not getting length and good pitching quality pretty much anywhere for tonight, so we might as well get the efficiency. And Rasmussen does give us that. I know his game will play, too, because there's a roof. Something catastrophic would have to happen to get rid of that. So I'll put Rasmussen third. You can consider Luis Castillo or Ranger Suarez if they get the green light to play, but and we'll talk about Castillo more and things to watch. But I would say Rasmussen could be above them regardless. So to me, Giolito one, Javier two, Rasmussen three, with Castillo and Suarez being other considerations if their games do wind up being played. Pitching is tough, which should inherently mean that stacking is not, and I think that is the case for the most part for tonight. I think we need to put the Angels at the top here and not think twice about it. That to me is the firmest sentiment on this entire slate is that the Angels need to be our number one stack. They're facing Glenn Otto, who has struggled so far this year. He has a 17% strikeout rate with a 12% walk rate, letting up a hard uh, hit ball 41% of the time. Otto does let up a lower fly ball rate than he would like, but a lot of that is line drive. He's not getting a lot of grounders. Ground ball rate is 39%. This is some issues we saw with Otto last year too, so it's not a huge surprise to see this happen. Now, in Otto's defense, he's faced a lot of tough teams, but that doesn't change tonight because he's facing the Angels. They have a 130 WRC plus against righties with a 198 ISO, a 42% fly ball rate, and all three of those numbers are the best marks on this slate. It's a convergence here of a good matchup and a good offense, and it's hard for me to turn that down. So of all the things on this slate, the thing I feel best about 
is that the Angels are the top stack for today, and I do want to treat them as such. Max Stassi is off the COVID list now. Uh, I'm not sure how fit he will be given how long he was out, but he did play last night. That's a good thing. I wouldn't be shocked if they give him a day off today just because he did play last night. But if he does play Stassi, a 233 ISO against righties in a small sample this year, I've typically in the past thought of him as being a lefty basher. Not really that anymore. Um, he can actually at righties pretty well too. So if he plays, I would keep him on the consideration list. Keep in mind though that he is coming off the COVID list. Could be some ramp up issues there. May not be in full fitness. So just keep that in mind for Stassi. But overall, I think broadly a guy I'm okay with against righties. I'm going to put the Yankees second for stacking. I'm not sure I feel about that with Giancarlo Stanton uh, being hurt now. That they're a thin offense, and we'll talk about the concerns of that later on. So there are some issues here, but I do still like them a decent amount. They're facing Tyler Wells here, who's had some good things happen for him this year. His expected ERA is 3.40. So I would, if you're the Orioles, deem the transition for Wells to the rotation to be a success. I'm just not sure how much of it sticks because the big thing is that Wells has a low strikeout rate paired with a lot of fly balls. His strikeout rate this year is 17%. He's letting up a 49% fly ball rate. And we saw Wells be a huge fly ball guy in the bullpen last year as well. So I would expect that that number, the fly ball rate being high to stick as his sample expands which means he's likely to let up a lot of balls in play with the low strikeout rate and a lot of those being in the air. The hard hit rate is 37%. That has kept things from really imploding, but part of that's thanks to the schedule he's faced. He's faced the Tigers, the Royals, the A's in there, which will make your numbers look a lot better. This is the third time the Yankees have seen Wells, and the first time they did not hit him that well, but the second time they saw him, they had a 43% hard hit rate in that game. Now they're seeing him a third time. I think they should be able to get to him here. So I do like them quite a bit in this spot. The problem is that there just aren't a lot of guys that I want to use here because Giancarlo Stanton, I would not expect to play today. Not into DJ LeMayhew, Marwin Gonzalez, and Eric Hicks have been awful against righties. Isaiah Kiner for left at least can steal some bags. So I guess that's a positive. Glaber Torres is making hard contact. So they're acceptable, but it's a really thin offense. They're easier to stack when you're spending down a pitcher and could just go nuts on Judge and Rizzo and figure out the rest there or have a value stack. But honestly, like, I think you'll be okay. So I will go with the Yankees. I will just keep my player exposure thin on the guys I think have upside. So Judge, Rizzo, Torres, Connor Falefa, maybe LeMayhew. I think that you got to be kind of selective with them when you're stacking them, given the current state of the offense. As far as the third stack go, uh, goes, I'm going back to the Astros once again today. They're facing Cal Quantrill, and Quantrill is coming off a brilliant outing. He was awesome. He had seven innings of one-run ball his last time out. But that was at home against the Reds, and now he's on the road against the Astros. That is a big, 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 big difference, and I think it allows us to go back to stacking against Quantrill here. The major selling point for me is a lack of strikeouts. Quantrill's at a 15% strikeout rate across seven starts, with a 9% walker, which means... He's letting up a ball in play about 76% of the time, and 40% of those are in the air, 36% are hard hit. That's a lower number than he'd want, but it allows him to have good games against bad teams like the Reds. The Astros are not that. They have a 121 WRC plus against righties with a 190 ISO and a 41% fly ball rate. That can get you in trouble real fast. It just has to be a good enough team to take advantage, and we do get that for today. So Quantrill's not a guy I always stack against, but when he's facing a team this good, I will. And I think that the Astros are a good stack. And honestly, with Stanton being out, you could probably put them second. I probably would put them second. So honestly, we'll make provisions on the fly. I'll put the Astros second above the Yankees in terms of stacking for today under the assumption that Giancarlo Stanton does not play. As far as the platoon splits for Quantrill, it's a really weird dynamic where he has a lower strikeout rate against righties, which is good for righties. But his bad at ball data is a lot worse against lefties. So I'm going to favor the lefties here because of that. I am okay with more strikeouts if the trade-off is higher batted ball upside, and we get that with the lefties. So I'm bumping up Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, who I always do that anyway. Uh, Michael Brantley gets bumped up here. I'm okay with the righties, uh, but I want to prioritize the lefties. Building my stacks around Tucker, Alvarez, Brantley, and going from there, because I do think that those guys uh, get a big bump here, given the batted ball profile of Quantrill versus lefties, as opposed to that versus righties. Let's go to things to watch for today and talk about some of those potential rain spots and other things we could do 
the reason I'm okay with Luis Castillo if he plays is that his velocity is climbing. You know, he had that injury to start the year, didn't come out of the gates firing super hot, but his average sinker velocity, 96 miles per hour last time out, his slider was 86.2. And both those, especially the slider, are up from where he was to open the year. And we did see Castillo pitch pretty well last time out. He was in a tough spot against the Jays, but pitched well. So I'd be okay with him if we get that uh, that Reds game in for today. I'm okay with targeting the Rangers for stacking against Reed Detmers. Detmers just faced the Rangers last week. He struggled there, and he struggled against the Rangers earlier on this year too. He's letting up a 43% hard hit rate with a 42% fly ball rate, and we can stack against that for sure. So I'm on board with the Rangers here as an alternative stack if you are scared off of the Yankees. If you know we get either Judge or Rizzo out too, that'd be pretty bad as well. So. I would say the Rangers are a good pivot. And finally, our team I'm good with using is the White Sox. They're facing Rich Hill. The strikeouts for him are down this year. A lot of fly balls. The White Sox still a very good team against lefties. So if anything, I might have them too low on this list, but that's mostly because I'm not sure that game plays. I already talked about Giolito in the pitching section. Don't want to waste a pitcher and a stack on a game that doesn't play. So I do like the White Sox, just not sure if that game plays. So wanted to relegate them down here. Let's finish up with our dinger calls for this Wednesday slate. The boring one is Mike Trout. He's back to doing Mike Trout stuff in a good matchup for today against Glenn Otto. It's Mike Trout. No more explanation should be necessary. The fun one is Mitch Garver. Garver is just a really good hitter. Gets the platoon advantage for today. Facing off against Reed Detmers. Detmers, again, batted ball profile, not perfect. We saw Garver uh, have a, a home run last night, so we know that he's Hitting well coming off the injured list. So to me, Garver, I think is, I, I know he's catchers way too often down here, but I think he's worth it. So to me, home run picks for today, Mike Trout and Mitch Garver. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. Again, dicey slate for sure. So if you don't feel comfortable about with someone, pivot. I, I think that there's no one who is foolproof on this slate by any means. So feel free to make your own judgments. If you don't like Giolito, that's okay to pivot. Uh, you know, I think that that's totally fine because no one here on this slate comes to that question. So use that to your advantage and try to leverage the chaos uh, in your favor. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Again, our PGA podcast already up on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Find that wherever you get your podcasts. We'll talk to you once again on Thursday. Good luck to you tonight. Go in some cash and have a great rest of your day. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.